Hello, I'm Rebecca and this video is the first video in a series of four, especially for Teresa actually and other textile designers who need to combine scanned areas of material into a single Photoshop file and make a repeating pattern from those combined scans. I've got four files open and so that you can see them all together on screen I'm going to go into my window menu, uh, my window menu in Photoshop, arrange and I'm choosing four up and there they all are and so you can see the whole thing I'm just going to reduce one down to 10% that's just the percentage that I can see that whole tile in my window area but if you get one tile visible the whole lot then you can go into your window menu again and you can choose arrange match zoom so you can see they're the four tiles that we'll be working with at this stage you've got two choices in your workflow you can either extend the canvas on an existing tile or you can make a new document trees and i yesterday was just working with two tiles and we extended the canvas on the first one. The problem with just working with two is we really had to work very hard to patch different bits of image from those two areas. So now I've decided to scan a little bit more material for this demonstration. And yesterday, instead of creating a brand new document and dragging these four tiles into the new document, we took one of the scans and went into the image menu, canvas size command to add more canvas area. And to do that, you can add width and height values. If you'd rather not work in pixels, you'd rather work in millimeters, you can choose millimeters from the drop down menu. And I think I will need a canvas size of 500 millimeters by 500 millimeters. And I want to add that canvas size to the left and bottom of my first scan. So I'm just going to click up the top left corner to say, yep, yeah, that's where that extra space is. In fact, actually, textiles two is the top right tile. So I'm going to click that top right tile and add extra canvas to the left and bottom of it. So if I click OK, you can see how when I move around, it's added extra width and height, left and bottom. Then you can take your move tool and drag the other tiles in. So the first click in my right hand top file activates that window and then I can click and drag and dump that second tile and repeat for the remaining two. So that's how we worked yesterday. However, I think a slightly better way of working in with these four tiles would be to create a brand new document. To create a new document, you go to the file menu and say new. I'm going to work in millimetres and my new document is going to be 500 millimetres by 500 millimetres, resolution 300 and I'm going to work in RGB colour using a white background. So when I click the create button, it stuck me a brand new untitled document in this top left hand tile. So I'll drag that out into this space and that will make it easier for you to see how easy it is to drag and drop information from one file into another one. So I'm going to use my move tool starting with my textile one tile and I'm going to drag and drop it into my blank document. So it's very easy. Move tool, activate the file that you want to drag stuff from and drag and drop it into your target document that you've just created. Then once all those four tiles I've been dragged into one single document. You can close all these individual tiles down just to make it easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. I'm going to um, just drag that file into my Photoshop window and extend that to the width of the video. And here you'll see my four tiles. And 
it'll be interesting to see what order they need to be in. So this is my first one. We'll go to the layers panel over on the right hand side of the workspace. Looks like two little diamonds lying down on their side. And you can see we have four layers in this file now that were automatically created when we dragged those other images into this target document. So layer one's the top left tile. Layer two is top right. Three, I think that's the bottom tile. Yeah, looks like it. Sort of looks like it's going to sit roughly there. And four is this one, and that's going to kind of match over there. We're a little, we're going to end up with a gap down the bottom here, but we'll resolve that in a later video. So the next thing we need to do is start stitching together. I'm going to show you how I do one, and then I'll show you a completed four one just to save a little bit of video time. So I've got layer one visible and I'm going to try and lay layer two over the top of it. So clicking the eye icon to switch layer two visibility on and clicking on that layer to make it active. I can use my move tool to position that more closely to where it's got to sit, which is over here somewhere. There's quite a big overlap. So really I'm going to try and match the joins rather than this edge here, I'm just going to try and match anywhere along where this, well, where this top tile overlaps the bottom one. And so I can see what I'm doing a little bit more. I'm using my layers panel and the opacity value. I'm going to drag that down a little bit so I can see the underlying layer one. And I'm going to zoom in using my zoom tool so that I can be a little bit more careful. Once I've zoomed in, I'm going to use my move tool again just to pick that up and move it a little bit more closely in position. So I'm really aiming to line up things along this edge here um, and around here. And it may be because things have been placed on the scanners at slightly different angles or materials have been stretched that you need to squish things around a bit and to do that I'll zoom out a little bit using one of my favorite shortcuts on the Mac it's command minus PC control minus that lets me zoom in and out command plus will let me zoom in spacebar lets you just move around so I'm going to free transform this layer too so it better matches what I've got sitting underneath it and you get that from the edit menu free transform command or you could learn the keyboard shortcut which is command T on the Mac control T on the PC so once you choose that command you'll see a little bounding box appear around the edge of your tile and you can use you um, that free transform command if you move your cursor away from the tile itself a little bit. I'll go on this white area so you can see more clearly. There's a little curly headed arrow and I can pick that up and just move that around to try and get the angle a bit more closely matched to the tile underneath it. And another useful technique for aligning things is to just use your arrow keys on your keyboard. You can nudge, nudge things into position like that as well. So pick the points that you want to consolidate really. I'll zoom in. Um, so those two lines are lining up okay. Maybe need to spin it a little bit more. Um, hmm. Let's just switch that visibility off a bit. So, yeah, layer two's got all that I need. And I'm happy with that join. Let's scroll down a little bit. This flower's not great. So what I need to do is something that you'll need to do an awful lot when you're trying to match these bits of material together. Uh, it's to use the free transform command and right click while you've got this blue bounding box to access the warp option. And when you do that, you get like a, a nine squared grid and you can click and drag lines around to push and pull bits of that image so that they match better and this takes a while this is the tedious bit but it is very powerful how we can match image areas to sit better on top of each other so 
so that you're really trying to eliminate any joins. So that's looking fairly good actually as I scroll through that. Maybe just drag that down a tiny bit. Now I'm going to go with that. And when you're happy with your free transform that you've both rotated and warped, you can either click the kick tick at the top of your workspace or hit your enter key. I'll zoom out, command zero. And that's what you're going to have to repeat for layer three and layer four. Don't forget to turn your opacity back up to 100 when you're happy. So to save a bit of time, I'm going to jump to the next step and show you the completed tile and talk about the other issues we have to resolve. So here is the final patched file and you can see this big gap at the bottom. We're going to need to steal bits from one and fill those holes. And we'll do that in the next video to clean up. Hmm. No, we won't. Stop that at 8.26 So here we have the final four tiles all matched and aligned together and we need to start kind of rubbing bits out and hiding bits on layers to get them to, to match better got with some dark edges here that we'll need to remove. So still in this video we're just going to look at some techniques using layer masks to try and hide bits from one layer and show the underlying layers underneath. So initially we'll just start trying to blend layer one and two together better so we get rid of this dark edge. I'm going to hit layer two and create a layer mask by clicking the add layer mask button at the bottom of the layers panel. And you'll see this little white square sitting next to layer two. I'll zoom in to this area. And my job really is to rub out the bits that don't really match and use the good bits. When you're working with a layer mask, you'll notice that your fill and stroke area turns to black and white and the concept behind this is when you use the brush to paint bits out white reveals what's on a layer you can see this layer mask is actually a little white thumbnail here and black hides so I need to swap my foreground color so my brush paints in black or you could use the eraser tool and erase <coughs> to black Using my brush tool, I'm going to swap my fill and stroke colours around. You can use this little um, arrow at the top right of where your fill and stroke buttons live in your toolbox. But to be honest, I actually use the X key. I find that far easier. So I'm going to hit the X key, choose my brush tool, make sure my layer mask is active by clicking on it. And you'll see these little corners that highlight when you're on the layer mask as opposed to the image itself so just make sure you're on the layer mask otherwise you'll end up painting black on your image change your brush size you can do that from the top of your screen and whack the size up a bit set the hardness to hmm probably not completely soft at zero and probably not completely hard at 100 i'm going to go with somewhere in between hit enter um, and then just rub bits out and that will reveal the good bits and you'll see where things meet and you'll be able to rub out all the dodgy dark bits 
and what I do quite a lot as well is I change my brush si um, size using the bracket keys the first open bracket makes the brush smaller and the closed bracket curly bracket just next to your enter key on your keyboard that makes it bigger so that can help so I'm going to keep as much of the good bits as I can and you'll see why I was joining certain bits up and matching certain bits and leaving other bits alone <clears throat> excuse me if you rub out too much you can just swap your colors around with an X and rub them back in again so that's how you use a layer mask to remove bits and try and get those joins better so I'll just do that one more time with layer 3 I've made layer 3 visible select it click in the bottom area of the layers panel on the add layer mask button there's my new layer mask my brush is active I'm going to swap those colors foreground and background colors so that black is my foreground color and I'm just going to paint out the bits that I don't think are matching properly trying to clean up all the dark bits and so you're just trying to bring in the, the right graphics where things aren't touching so I'm just going to rub down oh actually I might have to think a little bit more carefully about how this yellow flower patches into this bottom segment so I've gone too far down I'm going to swap around with my X tool and just rub that one back in because that's going to match into that bottom area better and then I'm going to try and blend that flower in and that leaf up to that petal and swap the colours around and get rid of that dark bit maybe make that ooh, swap back again and later on we'll, we'll clean up the white so it's just making sure those leaves and things match in let's hide this bit point on there and get that 12 running okay Ooh, just got away with that get that curl in get rid of some of that dark and yeah you'll need to do that for all four segments So the next video you'll learn how to patch in this bit at the bottom and crop it down to a square so we'll be doing some cleaning up thank you for watching and get ready for video two